Welcome back to 100 Hours in Terraria Hardcore, and of course, we're playing on Master Mode. If you haven't seen the first two videos, welcome to the 100 Hours in Hardcore Challenge, where different stages of Terraria's progression are locked behind 10-hour increments. In the last 10 hours, I could only beat the Brain of Cthulhu and Queen Bee, and now I'm allowed to fight Skeletron and Deerclops. Otherwise, I can make no other form of progression. I can hardly believe I've made it this far, and I bet I'm going to say the same thing uh, with each new iteration of the series, assuming I survive much longer. Man, I have to add that qualification a bunch. I can't say anything with certainty, and it's so weird talking like this when compared to my one-year series where I can be much more certain about completing different tasks, what with, you know, being given all kinds of time, as well as more than one life to my name. Now, I've been golfing this whole time because it turns out the golfing I did last time wasn't enough to get the golf cart keys. I know this because the golfer isn't selling the golden trophy. So even though he wouldn't be selling the golf cart keys anyways, you can still tell. It took very little golfing to get the score I needed because whacking a golf ball down a elevator is a busted way to increase your score in no time. But hey, less golfing for me, so I ain't complaining. I also need to keep up with my farming. It's honest work. Boom, 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 boom. Ladybug, ladybug, the luck is fine. You give me luck, I think. <laughs> ladybug, ladybug. I don't know what it is about this challenge, but it's making me sing a lot. Maybe I just do that when I'm trying to keep my mind occupied. I don't know, but hey, I might get that Thorben album released here sooner than I thought. Now, during the previous 10 hours, the beginning was occupied with Torch God and waiting for the goblins to spawn before getting to the boss. But during this section of the run, I decided to head straight to the dungeon for Skeletron. There's a lot of sand I need to mine away because some desert storm must have buried the dungeon, and I'm thinking it'd be wise to explore the entirety of the dungeon, find and mark all the biome chests, and remove spikes. Basically, get everything I can for now while also preparing for hard mode post Plantera. Gosh, that feels really far away, and it is, I guess, but still. I just hate myself for spending so much time on this world when it could all end in a split second, and who knows when that second might come, or I guess if it might come. Maybe I, maybe I will win this run, I don't know. Well, when I finished the arena, it was time to find out if Skeletron would be the one to end this run. But using Meteor Armor to remove the mana cost of the Grey Zappinator has me feeling pretty confident this will be an easy fight. Do it. Come at me, Skelly boy. I am already been hit. I very much don't like that I've already been hit. I sure hope I don't run into any issues using this thing, like if it wipes out the hands super quickly. This this is already going so well. This will be the easiest Skeletron fight of my life. Why is he shooting skulls? His hands aren't down. Is that just base? Is it based off of either hands or damage? Like, how does that work? How does that work? Why were you shooting skulls and you bo had both hands? But no big deal. We can easily take out his other hand, and then easily take out the head. Oh, just don't get carried away, it's don't feel safe. Never, ever feel safe when playing hardcore. That is the single worst mistake you can make. We gotta keep jumping into the lasers that are already out. There we are. Easy money. We got ourselves a lovely little, uh... Chippy's couch, so it's a uh, pretty epic. You know, we're we're gaming. And this brings me to the dungeon. A hunter in danger sense potion makes survival and exploration much easier. And it didn't take long to free the mechanic and grab the Muramasa, at which point it was time to go home, but not with a recall potion. No, a potion to return is far superior. After all, I don't have a tundra pylon and running all the way back to the dungeon isn't exactly the most riveting thing in the world. Potions of return, I feel, are a potion that's slept on by people who play the game. They are so very helpful, and not just for avoiding the tedious run back to where you were. It's great, of course, for dumping off the many valuables you've collected and clear your inventory, but in hardcore in particular, it allows you to skip the potentially dangerous travel back into the lower levels of a biome, or in this case, the dungeon. Sometimes the path down to a location is the most dangerous, so simply reappearing wherever you left off removes that risk entirely. And credit where credit is due, the Lunar Veil mod is what brought this potion into the spotlight for me as a bunch of them are given to the player for free in that mod. 
Anyways, I made the best pre-hard mode melee weapon, the Knight's Edge, the void bag for the sweet sweet extra storage, and the grand design which will hopefully keep me much safer from traps by revealing all the wiring in the world. I return to the dungeon which I am generally quite scared of. The enemies here can kill you real quick and if you're caught in a bad position, you could end up jumping into a bunch of spikes while also being juggled by skeletons. But that healthy and justified paranoia led me to carry potions like iron skin and regeneration along with danger sense and hunter and those made the dungeon much more survivable. This well preparedness allowed me to loot all the chests I came across, mine away much of the spikes, explore plenty if not the entirety of the dungeon to the best of my knowledge, and find all the biome chests. In other words, I was able to do everything I set out to do. I did consider searching for the water bolt and did mine a few bookshelves and search for it, but I never did get the thing. As it is, I never understood the hype behind it. Maybe it used to be better than it is now, but I've always found it to be a more mid-tier weapon. And because it's found on the bookshelves in the dungeon, I often forget it even exists until much later in the game. And that's just about it for the dungeon, which always is a weird thing for me when making these videos. I spend quite a long time down here, in most runs at least, but in the end, there's not exactly a lot to talk about, and that's the case for all videos. <laughs> I don't know what to, what to say. The dungeon is always just a side note and so a hard mode dungeon. It just feels weird how there isn't really anything interesting to talk about down here. Back home, slime started falling from the sky and King Slime spawned once again. The Dark Lance is an underworld spear I am constantly told is underrated and I tried it against the slime and sure, it's nice and it's definitely got its use cases, but the Knight's Edge is just so much easier to use. It's easier not needing to use my brain power to think of when the Dark Lance would be more advantageous than the sword. Oh, and one of the best things about the dungeon is the alchemy table can be found down there. This allows me to create potions with a chance that certain ingredients won't be consumed when crafting, allowing everything to go much farther. And with all the farming and fishing I've been doing, it was time to craft more potions than I'll probably need. But at the same time, I think I'll use more of these potions in the day to day than I normally would and not just for major events. What with how long this run is going to be, I'm not actually sure 70 potions is going to be enough. The mechanic hadn't spawned yet, so I added two more houses at spawn. Before the day came, I decided to make a stop by the tundra to reforge my knight's edge to legendary, the best modifier it can have. I had over four platinum, and a reforge on the higher end costs eight gold. So I should be fine, right? Well, this is when I learned why people hate the goblin. Seriously? You're kidding. That is by far the worst reforge luck I have ever had. I don't know how many times I reforged the thing, but over four platinum were just flushed down the toilet, and now I am angry. <laughs> <laughs> Before we continue, if you've been enjoying the video, be sure to subscribe. At the end of the year, I'll be firing one mini nuke 2 from this rocket launcher at year's end for every subscriber I have. So if you want to claim your mini nuke 2 and support long form challenges like this, consider subscribing. Still in a seething rage, I mined more obsidian to craft the skull to combine with the cobalt shield. The obsidian shield replaced my frog webbing and losing the extra jump height is too bad, but knockback immunity is just too helpful to pass up on. I returned to the tundra and notice how I used a potion to return here, very helpful, and then I purchased the tundra pylon with what little money I had remaining after the rage forging, which I guess is what I'm going to call it now. I drank several teleportation potions I collected because they are always fun to use and I collected a glow tulip. This isn't significant in any way, I just wanted to mention it to troll people who always say it's rare. But I guess the joke is really on me because I tried reforging the Knight's Edge again and I still didn't get legendary on it. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention this, but you might have noticed the strange order of relics on top of my house. I decided I was going to collect and organize all the relics from every boss I killed during this run, and the order I killed them in the run is from left to right. I just thought it'd be cool to mark it and give a visual representation of the progress made and the farming done. Speaking of, because the goblin stole my life savings and left kidney, I was out of funds and the easiest way I could think of to get cash was to farm the Brain of Cthulhu. So I killed him six more times and after placing the relics I noticed the traveling merchant must have gone for a lava bath and that reminded me I could shimmer his hat for the satchel. And now that I have all this money burning a hole in my pocket, I returned to the Goblin Tinkerer, but I didn't give him 
the Knight's Edge, as he's already stolen enough money reforging that thing. Instead, I gave him the Obsidian Shield, and I didn't get great luck with that either, but I did give up earlier, wanting to, you know, keep at least some of my money. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why I haven't fought Deer Clops, and the answer is simple. I'm terrified of Deer Clops, and I think the best I've ever performed in a fight against the Deer is dying twice. Plus, he doesn't drop anything good, so why bother? Instead, it's time for hard mode prep. I've already done plenty, but there's one important fact to keep in mind with hard mode. The mech bosses are locked behind the 10 hours after the wall of fresh, meaning I can't break Crimson Altars for the first 10 hours of hard mode. That might as well be a death sentence, but one way around needing to break the altars is fishing, and so I made a massive fishing spot underground. It's not necessarily the safest place, but there's better fish to be had down here than on the surface, so I made a big ol' fishing hole and returned home to see my deathweed was blooming, and I need to farm that really quick before the night ends. Making the large fishing hole reminded me that the mechanic exists and she sells actuators. This is the last ingredients I need to make all my NPC housing and fishing holes safe. So, after purchasing a bunch of actuators, I got to work on mob and dumb NPC proofing all of my houses and fishing spots. Because I am the only one who can activate these pressure plates, the NPCs will not be able to leave and the mobs will not be able to enter. Well, other than the ones that go through walls, but that's a small subset, all things considered. And now, well, I decided to do the unthinkable, fight Deer Clops. Considering how long this challenge is going to be, I'm thinking I might try and beat every boss. But at the same time, there are several like Duke Fishron and Empress and even this Deer Clops that I do not feel safe fighting and hardcore. But boredom does crazy things to you. So I got to work blowing up a large hole in the tundra. I think the hole might allow me to trap deer clumps down there, and if need be, I can flee to the platforms above and be safe. Not sure if that'll actually work, but why not try it, right? I quickly killed the eye as a warm-up and for a little quick cash, crafted the deer thing, built platforms over the hole, and summoned deer clumps, a boss I have never beaten without dying and never fought in hardcore. Oh, oh. Okay, 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 okay. This one might be one of the first times I've ever beaten Deer Claw, so the first try on tier. Let's go! Granted, I'd have to do that in order to continue this challenge, but still! Ooh. Well, that was much easier than I thought it would be. I opened the treasure bag and was a little disappointed. The only helpful thing Deer Clops does drop is the only non-Old Ones Army Sentry, which I suppose is only actually helpful against the army itself, but that's fine. I'm just happy to have beaten Deer Clops and that the run can continue. I say that, but I did farm for more flings fur, crafted yet another deer thing to fight your clops again because I did really want that sentry, so I killed him again. Didn't get the sentry, shrugged, and cleansed my hands of this boss. I've done it, I've seen, I've fought, I've won. You know what? Who needs a lame sentry anyways? Rather than risk my life with a boss, I'm going to do some lava fishing. I need the sponge, the bottomless lava bucket, and the demon conch, but all this fishing trip got me was the demon conch. Not great luck. And this is when I made a great miscalculation. See, I've gotten a good sum of money at this point, and I thought to myself, surely the Goblin Tinkerer won't rob me blind for a third time, right? Legendary. Legendary. Come on. Legendary! What the heck? So help me. I'm going to make the fly meal and kill this guy. Homicide is the only answer, which I guess explains why I ended up in the underworld. <laughs> I guess. While I'm down here, I might as well mine a bunch of obsidian bricks for that eventual hell bridge, and there were still shadow chests to open. And that's what my time is filled with now, hard mode prep. I made a large open area next to the fishing hole, nothing complex, just a big open box that I can turn into a farm at some point, and later in the jungle, I expanded the Queen Bee Arena to be better suitable for Plantera. It'll also be great for farming jungle enemies, I'll just have to be extraordinarily careful here, 
And because the travel to an underground location can be more dangerous than the location, I decided to mine a straight tunnel to the arena. Along the way, there was a hive, and I just so happened to get the honey fishing quest, which means bottomless honey bucket for me. The honey fishing also reminded me of honey fins, a fish that heals for 120 health, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the highest healing anything available in pre-hard mode. I forgot these existed, and although regeneration potions are great for their 90 healing and reduced cooldown, I thought a bunch of honey fins would be good to fish up in case I found myself liking them more. When I wrapped that up, I fished for variegated for, for variegated lard fish. The fish needed to make summon potions. I never get these, but here we are now, and an extra summon is always a welcome addition. And at this point, I'm doing way too much fishing because I returned to the underworld to get the bottom of the lava bucket. I got the lava sponge, but not the bucket. Though, I suppose there aren't too many things that actually need lava for. I prepared an ocean fishing hole and then filled the box I mined in the last 10 hours with water. Now, I have a truly safe fishing hole in case the one underground happens to be a little too dangerous. Maybe it'll get corrupted or hollowed, you never know. But now, I gotta back up. The party girl must have loved all the fishing because she threw a party and I thought there was something special being sold and... Well, I thought they might be helpful, and I guess you can tell me whether or not they are. Oh, now now we're having a party. <laughs> yeah. What's this? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's such a silly I just I'm just bald now. I'm like a, it's like a lion's mane. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Checking what every NPC was selling did have its benefits though, as I noticed the lawnmower being sold by the golfer. And the great thing about the lawnmower is that if you mow the grass, spawn rates are reduced. Yeah, I'm going to mow the lawn hard. I was curious if I could mow the plant boxes to stop them from growing would be nice, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. I explored the rest of the underworld just to fill it in. I mined the obsidian bricks along the way and the whole thing took way longer than I thought, but I still found myself sitting around wondering what to do, which is the only reason I think things like this. I'm on my own floating island. This, this must mean that there's some lore behind this. The, this entire world is floating. It's one big floating island. And all of that is just other islands I, I could travel to, but we have yet to figure out um, inter-island travel. This is all so weird after playing for a year on One World and not having as many situations as I've had in this hardcore run where I'm stuck wondering what next. Probably the only reason is I'm too afraid to explore or even build. I don't want to build something just to die, <laughs> and I don't want to explore and accidentally step on a trap and die, so I stick with the safe stuff like farming and fishing. I did make the farming area a little bit better by adding platforms. I don't really know how to make them properly, just basing it off of what I see in Socrates' video or two. <laughs> Not sure it'll actually be effective, but I suppose it's a start. I expanded the arena a bit more, and then I was curious as to what special fish you can catch in the underground tundra. Every other biome has one, but what does the tundra have? Turns out, there's a frost minnow that makes warmth potions that reduce damage from cold sources. What does that even mean? What's considered a cold source? I presume it'll help against ice golems and elementals, but other than that, how does it help? Especially since these fish can be caught in pre hard mode. Does it protect from all tundra enemies? And why only have a potion like this for the tundra? I love a potion that protects from jungle enemies. What a strange potion. I increased the size of the arena even more because you can never have too big an arena. I mined a meteor, after all I might need a bunch more for meteor bullets later. I quickly stopped by the dungeon making some easier paths to travel in the dungeon and then spent a hefty amount of time fishing while also turning on the slime statue I'd previously acquired to farm a bit of gel. I love the flamethrower so I'm going to want lots of gel for that in hard mode. I flattened a number of hills to make a straight path and also built a minecart system that spans nearly the entire world. Living trees blocked the path to the ocean on either side and I didn't feel like going around them. It wouldn't add a whole lot of space so we'll just live with where it is. I also have to be real careful of these minecart tracks. In a different run, the video for which will come out at another time, I accidentally mounted a minecart instead of my unicorn when fighting a hard mode boss and losing momentum like that is quite dangerous. So I intentionally built the track in a way that would hopefully prevent that from being a problem. I summoned King Slime again because there was slime raining from the sky and we'll finish off our time trying in vain once again to get the bottomless lava bucket. 
Love of fishing in the underworld. Love of fishing in the underworld. It's dangerous, it's very hot, but I'm finding fish anyway. There's fish that live in the lava, they swim everywhere. I wonder if on one, four, five, we'll see them swimming in the lava. I don't know, I really don't, but it would be kind of interesting. But the lava's more viscous and hard to see. So maybe they won't have the fish swimming in the lava. Now I'm singing about a 1.4.5 update. I don't know what I'm doing. And that brings us right to the end of hours 21 through 30. With the final remaining hour, I finally broke down and made a build. It's kind of okay. I really just wanted to practice my build with Dynasty Wood. I love how the stuff looks, but can never really make something I'm happy with. Still not very happy with this one, but it's all right. I tried again to reforge my Knight's Edge to Legendary and failed once more because the Goblin Team career sucked. And then I had a thought. I roped up to a nearby Sky Island and I made a little arena to make killing wyverns a little easier in hard mode and made sure to farm enough harpies for a lovely banner. Sure, wyverns aren't that hard when you figure them out, but hey, this is hardcore. Hard mode will also be filled with fishing immediately after killing the wall, and since I can't break crimson altars, fishing is my only option for hard mode ores and crates are what I need most. As it turns out, those require ambers, so I mined a bunch of desert fossils to extractinate some ambers. But that's hours 21 through 30 in 100 hours in hardcore. Oh, uh, two more minutes. Uh, give me another minute. Ah, come on. We get to that 30. We gotta get it. Well, farm slimes until the final minute and a half are done, and that was it. 30 hours in, and we're doing pretty good. I feel pretty confident about beating the wall afresh, but hard mode has me real nervous. If I can make it through the next 10 hours, then I'll probably be able to keep going, I think. But the early master mode hardcore is so gosh darn dangerous, and that installment will be right here when it releases, and you can check out the rest of the series right below it.